So Mike, um, vitamins are important uh, to maintain a proper immune system and many athletes are taking uh, vitamin supplements. Would you recommend them? or? Uh, yes, I would. Uh, these vitamins are actually uh, essential for the normal functioning of the immune system. And if you become deficient in, in virtually any of them, but particularly for vitamins uh, A, vitamin E, vitamin B12, folic acid, then your immune system actually goes down. It won't function as well. You're more likely to get infections. So one way of protecting against that is to take just a simple multivitamin tablet you know, on, a, on a daily basis. So yes, I would recommend that. What actually causes infections? Uh, infections are caused mostly by viruses. The most common infection that athletes get and the general population is the common cold. And 90% of common colds are caused by viruses. The other 10% or so by bacterial infections. And is it true that athletes like cyclists, endurance athletes, get actually more um, infections than uh, weightlifters, for example? Um, in, in general, yes, the endurance athletes get more infections than, uh, say, the power athletes and the, and the sprinters. Um, this is it's thought to be because the, the long, hard hours of training that the endurance athletes do actually causes sufficient stress to actually depress their immunity, at least temporarily for several hours after exercise. In fact, there have been some studies done where people have uh, run a marathon and uh, the guys who've run the marathon actually come down with more infections in the, in the week or two afterwards compared to guys who might have trained for the marathon but didn't compete for reasons other than illness. And are there any nutritional strategies um, to minimize uh, the risk of infections and endurance at sleep? There's only a few that we can currently recommend because the evidence isn't very clear on a lot of things. There's so many of those things in the health food shops that claim to boost immunity but most of the studies that have been done in athletes show that they don't really work. Uh, so things that do work, we know, most important is to avoid deficiencies of energy, protein and all the essential micronutrients you need. Not only vitamins but minerals as well like manganese, iron, zinc, they're very important to maintain immunity as well. Uh, taking probiotics is probably a good idea. There's been a number of recent studies using the lactobacillus species of probiotics. Uh, that have been published quite recently, all showing a positive effect in reducing infection incidence and in some cases also reducing severity or durations of infections when they do occur. And what about additional antioxidants? Um, that, that's a, that's a, a difficult one to answer. The, there were some studies done in the 1990s by Edith Peters group uh, in South Africa and they reported that taking high doses of vitamin C in particular for several weeks before running an ultramarathon race decreased the incidence compared with a placebo treatment uh, of infections that is. Um, but subsequently in recent years this story has come about that if you take high doses of antioxidant vitamins it might actually impair some of the adaptations to training mm -hmm. because the, when we do exercise we generate some increased free radicals or reactive oxygen species and these are thought to be important signals in the training adaptation process. So taking too high uh, levels of antioxidant vitamins might actually uh, quench those free radicals as they're being produced and so prevent the training adaptation. However those studies have actually mostly been done either in animals or in untrained humans. And there are one or two more recent studies coming out now that are, have looked at uh, already well-trained athletes. And when these guys take high doses of combined vitamin C and vitamin E for like several months, uh, no performance changes, no impairment of training adaptations was, has been reported in those studies. So it's not really clear whether or not they do. Uh, athletes take high dose vitamin C because they've probably heard uh, or read something that tells them that uh, it might reduce their risk of infection and that was really based on the studies that were done in the 1990s. We now know I think that one of the mechanisms by which the antioxidants might be working actually is by suppressing cortisol release during exercise and cortisol is a stress hormone mm -hmm. that depresses immunity so if you can prevent that being secreted or reduce its secretion you, you don't get as much immune depression with your exercise boat. And do you believe that a lot of athletes are having a micronutrient deficiency? 
Well, certainly uh, w when these nutrition surveys done or when, when you test the blood of athletes to see what their, their vitamin status is, for example, um, a number of studies show that usually iron status is a little bit on the low side, so they have low levels of serum ferritin, possibly even low levels of hemoglobin, which would actually certainly impair performance, so you certainly don't want that. So, uh, but vitamin D is another one that's come up recently. Uh, it's only rec been recognised in the last probably f three or four years that vitamin D is actually very important to maintaining normal immune function. It actually stimulates the activity of some of our immune cells. And what about vitamin C or E? or? Uh, those are rarely deficient. Okay. Uh, we usually get enough of those in the diet, provided you're eating plenty of fruit and vegetables. That's the best way probably to get your, uh, the vitamins and minerals that you, you need.